bit more literal. Yeah. You know, it's, it smacks you in the face. It's just, yeah, well, it's, I've yeah. found what uh, works. You know, I can do a mother and child and know I'm going to connect with a million people because everyone feels that. Mm. And so sometimes I'll use it as a tool, as a, you know, a hook to, to get gotcha. in too. You know, sometimes yeah. I do that. But, um, yeah, very much I love the fact that, you know, you can do something and... Like I, I, I admire someone who can plan like you do, Adam, because I just I tried doing that. I remember at college I used to say, now do lots of little, you know, samples of what you're going to do. I'd always jump in. <laughs> just uh, haven't got the patience. I'm too impatient. Because you're yeah. very particular and I'm not. It's actually very different, different technique. Whereas your all of your energy, Elaine, is coming through the lens. Lens, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. an interesting what thing. So all the music for Elaine and yeah. dynam, dy, dynamism and everything yeah. is out yeah. there. Yeah, it's so. framed. And I, th I think another thing that is missing in Australian culture that that <clears throat> is important even in European and Russia and places is that artists are are put on a pedestal. And mm. perhaps they don't even have to teach, mm. but, uh, or they, they they are allowed to study and produce, and they're they're given, and it's not called welfare. Mm. It's it's, yeah. it's put on a pedestal, and they're given much more grants and and um, recognition. And uh, why should you have to teach after That's you've right. won the Parliament House? Why, right. <laughs> why should Kyla have to to, yeah. to be desperate? Um, That's right. Have uh, bread and and why should Adam have to play the didgeridoo to kids? Yeah. Uh, why don't they just pl uh, show a video of him, t you know, that should be passed around as part of the curriculum in every yeah. school? Yeah. You know, with his little... Because we're not uh, in Rosal Oxley's dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, for instance, I don't know if anybody knows it, but um, Black Douglas goes out to the schools and, and teaches um, uh, that Aboriginals have a place in this society yeah. and he tells why in little stories and humanistic yeah. stories and plays the did you do and that the Aboriginal people were the first ones here but you know that can be part of the curriculum in every single yeah. school be, yeah. and videos of our artists and of Namajur and their place in society and and give artists much more grants you know when Whitlam came in they poured it, it needs to be poured in it, yeah. it, we need to we revitalize yeah. the whole of the cultures and art. Well, they're just taking all the money out now. Yeah, unfortunately. It's very, I very mean, the sad. Toast is and the philanthropists don't pieces. give as much as, as, half as much as in America. Half as much. Not even they don't understand. a quarter. So we have, we have a question. Uh, sorry, what was your name? Anna. From Anna. From Anna. Uh, Black, I'd like to just hear a little bit more from you around the Uncle Max painting. Where did it come from? It's a favourite of yours, isn't it? The scale, yeah. um, how it was received, uh, where is it now? Did someone okay. acquire it? Just a little bit of a, a picture painting of, of that experience. Anna refers to the Archibald, my first success in the Archibald last year. And uh, as the token second Indigenous artist chosen for the award. There's a lot of, you want the real gritty stuff as well? Yeah, let's yeah. go, there you go. Well, um, 2000 and, 2006 was my first. 2006 was the first taste of the whole hoopla behind that event, as we as is known as the most famous portrait prize in the world. And that was being selected as a finalist in the Win Prize, uh, which is the landscape prize that accompanies. And I painted this piece that had um, stylized termite mounds, but they were middle fingers in the landscape. And it was giving it back to the mining company. It was called Six Finger Salary. And, um, and it got selected as a finalist. And I got this call from a very proper lady in the art gallery. It's the art gallery society ladies who generally do all the calling. Um, Adam Hill, we're delighted to announce that your painting Six Finger Salary has been chosen for the, art, for the win prize. And I just about said, fuck me. <laughs> and she said, she sounds so surprised. I said, well, and she said, but the colours are so beautiful. <laughs> I thought, I said, that's my victory. That's yeah. what I've been yeah. painting. Yeah. That's why I've been painting my style for so many years. Now they start blind them With by the colours colors yeah. and put the message in there. Yeah. You know? that's right. Yeah. And so this one came around and I got a similar call. And that was with the portrait of Uncle Max Yulo, who the major victory for me 
is just being in there, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, I because I become, I become somewhat one of uh, maybe several, um, no, several either indigenous artists or subjects in the history of the Archibald to, to be chosen as a finalist. Um, and I got the call um, regarding the painting of Uncle Max and similarly, ladies said um, that uh, I had been accepted as a finalist and while I was on the phone, my girlfriend said to me, ask them if you're the first Aboriginal artist to paint an Aboriginal subject. And I knew I wasn't because um, Robert Campbell Jr. had, I remember Robert Campbell Jr. from Kempsey had painted somebody. And anyway, so I proposed a question and she said, no, it's mandatory that we choose at least one Indigenous. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's even worse. So you're token black. Yep. Oh, Once that, again, I was... That was a kick in the <laughs> So all of a sudden, I didn't feel so special. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, and, um, token black. What, what, yeah. Token black dog. Where was that? And, <laughs> and so, of course, it was only oh, myself wow. and Richard Bell this year who were the token Indigenous artist. Oh, so you mightn't have been the token one. He might have been the token one. No, he's got a little bit more, more infamy than I do, so I'm pretty sure he's got a, a back door, black door pass. Oh. Yeah, actually. But um, oh, aside from that, what was priceless was having Uncle Max involved in the whole thing. And that was, um, it's quite a spectacle as I had experience from the Win Prize where, you know, the media ensemble is quite phenomenal when it, as they gather in the room. And what you do learn is that um, the, it's easy to, what I mapped out over the course of the experience was a really interesting puzzle. And that is that the, of course, the winner is always placed in the center room and the, and the runner up uh, is in, so it's always happened in the center room because they set the stage in one corner and it faces, and where the stage faces, that will be the winner. And so, uh -huh. John McDonald had written an article about um, Water Street as a finalist, of Nigel Milton, and uh, and then he also commended the runner-up, and then dismissed everything else. Um, but no, John McDonald from by face from various openings, and I kind of they got my back up a bit. Oh, how dare you dismiss us? You know, at least you pay us some due, and and um, <coughs> and then uh, Damien Minton. Damien Minton Gallery, he was judging for the um, the, ref, the salon, the ref, refusé, and he was down there, and he gave me the heads up that it doesn't look like, because I put it in for the win prize as well this year, doesn't look like the win one's going to stay, but it's a strong candidate for the refusés. But I will just say that Uncle Max isn't going anywhere. Mm. And I just punched the air and thought, what? Yeah. And he said, don't tell anyone. You're not allowed to tell anybody for, se mm. for the several days leading up. And so with that, um, kind of knew that he was staying there, and so we get Uncle Max involved and get him primed up. So they kind of take him down in taxis and Ubers and whatever each day. On the Thursday is the artist is the um, artist luncheon of everybody who's been chosen, and so um, and then Friday is the announcement of the winner. So when we got there on the Friday and walked in, saw the media scrum everywhere. And all of the journos had their um, booklets that were supplied by the archaeology of New South Wales. And in the immediate circle that I could see, um, every page was open on Nigel Milton, portrait of Charles Water Street. So they, they all knew the heads up exactly who had won. And of course, there's all the fanfare. We actually thought that um, a Judith Nelson was the the portrait of Judith Nelson was the winner because she had so much media around her, uh, her portrait, and um, that was to do with other things, of course, her gigantic um, development down in Central Park. But um, what I will say is the the biggest reward was a having Uncle Max as um, as a complete undercard because he was totally outside of the criteria. So for me, that's the biggest victory. It's almost like winning it because they usually want to see a uh, sports person, politician, somebody in the arts or music. And Uncle Max is none of those, except he's there on the ephemeral, like he's, he's, there, he's there painting, uh, smoking up wherever Clover Moore was. So the other thing I've heard from hearsay is that 
his face is so kind and so warm and endearing it's very pleasurable to look at and um, <laughs> and that's well well and this is this is uh, it's all stuff that you take down the mental notes yeah, because this year is a big challenge for me to even get a candidate I want to paint a female mm. now the horrible thing is that you have to keep in mind that they have to be known to the public so they have to be almost a household name. I don't want to paint that. I want to paint Jenny Monroe. I want to paint um, uh, uh, you know, Shireen Malamud or whatever, community people, you know? But you can just to, just to sure write yourself off of getting a chance of getting in there, you know? And that's money. Because that's it. It costs yeah. money. That's awesome. That's it. It's a waste. It's a waste. Is that, it's part of what I was mentioning earlier before about strategizing your interest in the Justine Saunders is a subject to me. Is that? Justine Saunders. Yeah, just true. Before, but just before she died. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, she yeah. was stunning. And the yeah. portrait was gorgeous. I mean, Tate bought yeah. it for five degrees later on. So I was happy. But, that's right. You know, I, I was disappointed I didn't even get in uh, looking. But it was, you know, her just before she died, it was a very significant picture. If I was to paint Marsha Langton, she's always yeah. been a, a, yeah. up, up there in the list of a subject. But um, the thing is that yeah. you've got to take an account from from what I experienced in the murmurs in the room, mm. is that um, there's a, uh, a, a growing consensus of people that would say, oh, but she's, um, <laughs> she's really not nice to listen to. You know, so you get that kind of stuff. It's almost yeah, as what, yeah. it's like you hear people say, yes, no, but um, I much yeah. prefer Malcolm Turnbull because he looks, he, he's much more handsome, yes. you know? Yes. So you gotta take that into consideration. Yeah. So, um, it, it's, it's gonna write you off, but I wind up with Uncle Max. So Uncle Max is there on both days and he's quite a character, as you <laughs> would imagine. And you know, he's just at home in the social light. Well, you should have seen the looks on half of the people in that room at that luncheon. I reckon, you know, 60% of those people who have never been anywhere near a person that way. And I caught glances on people's faces and I just wished, I, when I saw them with my eye, I wish I had Google glasses or something, yeah. I could have just captured that photograph of yeah. these people and their expressions of looking Uncle Max. I'd ask people to get up from their seat, young people, to let Uncle Max have a seat. And I thought this is gonna be a very interesting scenario, you know? <laughs> but the positive side was the Art Gallery Society ladies flocked around him. Oh, he loved that. They wanted firstly to see his eyes because his eyes are pretty amazing and I must say I did catch them pretty well, you know. So they're all flanked around him. Oh my goodness, Uncle Max, it's such a pleasure to meet you. It's, it's, you know, so incredible that you're involved in this and Uncle Max is just giggling away, you know, and, and we're walking down the corridor there to where the luncheon takes place and Uncle Max just turns to me and says, I like them white ones, you know. <laughs> and then they kept, they kept it up. Oh, you're so <laughs> handsome, Uncle Max. He goes, oh, I'd like to take you out bush and have you some witchy dig rub. <laughs> and my girlfriend and I just <clears throat> I put the, get the video on. And so she got my phone, put the video on, and we're just interviewing, and we're watching yeah. Uncle Max walking along, you know. Awesome. And then he looks straight down the barrel of the camera and says, never know your luck in the big city. <laughs> Uncle Max! <laughs> yeah. And what happened to the painting? Was it well, the painting's on tour, or? and a um, couple of things had a, a couple of, um, uh, excuse my colloquialism, pissing in my pocket offers for the painting, mm. which um, I didn't want to handle any of that. I don't have an agent representative, but the closest I have was Damien Minton. So I passed it to Damien Minton and said, you know what, if you run with this baby, I want X amount, you take your cut, and we're all happy. And so that was the um, legislated on the entry form, whatever. So a couple of people offered me pittance for it and the painting, and um, but also, it, so it goes on a tour of seven regional galleries, and um, I'm, it's pro, I think it's now at Musselboard. But I will say that what's been phenomenal about the Archibald and the strength of the Archibald last year is that. They broke gallery record, Art Gallery New South Wales record. They had ex in excess of 50,000 people wow. through the gates. I'm, I'm a bit of dirt about that as well. Um, and then it went, the next gallery straight off the Art, Art Gallery New South Wales was Ballarat. 
they broke, they, they blew it out of the water. They've never had that many people at Ballarat Art Gallery, you know? And so, if you think about the $25 entry fee per person. That's only $25. Yeah. Uh, you think about the $50 entry fee from us, the artists, of which there were 890 yes, yes, artists right. who entered the Archibald this year, yeah. and yeah. 40 uh, were chosen. Yeah, right. um, and then I learned that respective galleries that take the tour pay the Art Gallery New South Wales 80 grand for the privilege. 80? 80 grand? Wow. Yeah, wow. So, yeah. Okay. So, do your sums. Yeah, they make it. They yeah. make it. Uh, Big business. Yeah. And then to hear the um, Chief Officer of the ANZ Bank stand up there and gloat about what they do for the partnership. Uh, to hear the Deputy Mayor talk about what New South Wales Arts, uh, what, the, what the New South Wales Government have done for the art. Mm. If I didn't have my girlfriend today, I, I kind of got a bit of a reputation for putting away about seven champagnes before anybody sure, speaks yeah. and then throwing strawberries at them. <laughs> because, um, you know, nobody in the polite society crowd said anything about George Brandis sapping a hundred million dollars for the arts while they said what they were doing for the arts. So, it's, um, what did I say before in the inside about the layers of politics that affect you? <laughs> you know? yeah. So, there it is. It would be highly surprising to see um, what becomes of uh, the popularity of the surrounding things. Notice in Ballarat that um, as per the uh, popularisation of what constitutes an entry in the Archibald, of course, all of the banners in Ballarat and all of the electrical boxes that had the prints on them were all Jenny Key or, um, uh, or Water Street, the, the, the winner. And I thought, I want to know how long it's going to take for us to see Uncle Max's face up there or someone of a different ethnicity uh, or indigenous ethnicity, you know? So I'm, I'm just watching Bated Breath that, that one there. Archie. So have a go. Yeah, I guess you never know if you have a go, unless you have a go. Mm -hmm. But I can't understand oh, people. Congratulations on getting yeah, in here. That was huge. Yeah, that was huge. Well, I'm pretty, on that one, I'm pretty sure, apart from being the token, uh, oh, token chosen you, what artist. You should never have said that. Uh, yeah, um, I, I do wow. honestly believe that um, Ben Quilley had a lot to do with it because he gave me a big hug and a kiss on the cheek at the opening. Oh, I know Ben gosh. personally from, from yeah. events. And uh, he shook my hand and said, kill a portrait. And I know he, he's on uh, the, the board, so um, it's nice to have that appreciation. And I guess it's one of those things that we were talking about before, earlier inside, about um, these incremental steps of change that are taking place. At least we have uh, the fact that we, it's mandatory to, choose, mandatory to choose an indigenous artist. Whereas if you look at the history, his story of the Archibald and that interesting um, little kind of uh, video animation that the ABC made. If you Google ABC history of the Archibald, mm -hmm. they've made the history of the Archibald in 140 years and they morph the faces. Oh, wow. And, um, it, and they've <laughs> uh, hilariously um, subtitled the changing face of the Archibald. Oh. 70 something percent of the recipients of the Archibald in the history have been white men. Yeah. That's the right. subject the of the white, white male. So we now make up only 7 percent um, of indigenous or other. And that's women. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And so if you watch the animation, the face doesn't really change. <laughs> Morphe, you know, yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And I don't want to stop anyone else from asking, but I do have one more question that anyone can answer. So I actually take the point about Rio Tinto and, and the coal companies. Um, I work at Telstra, and Telstra sponsors the um, art prize in Darwin. Yep. Um, and as an employee, I was, I think, very fortunate enough to be able to go and participate in that and see a lot of the activity mm -hmm. but it is controversial because of the judging because of um, you know the fact that it's usually a safe art that's chosen or recognized even within the context of aboriginal art 
So I'm just yeah. curious from you guys, do you think that big corporations still have a role to play in sponsoring these kinds of prizes? And what advice would you give to somebody at Telstra in that context? Like, if they do it, how should they do it better or more differently? Well, I think there's room for corporations. I have a problem with the mining. I just, because of the direct link to the destruction of the country. That was the hardest thing for me. And receiving it and then being the first recipient of the one. Oh man, <laughs> I'm just glad I had you a piece called Defending Country in it. That's all I was glad yeah. of. Yeah. Because it actually was a real bang, you know, it, it actually came together and, um, you know, the two sides. Totally. And, you know, even when it came to, they wanted to uh, put me in the calendar for the mine mining to go around to the mines for the wow. calendar. <laughs> and uh, they were going to edit it. You know, and, and they said you can only put this many words in. So they I sent over what I wanted to say. They sent back, oh, we can't have all that. How about this? I said, oh, no. I purposely sent back a verse that fitted exactly the words they wanted, but what I wanted to say. So there was a bit of, oh, it's ridiculous. Mm. But yeah, there was a lot of uh, propaganda and, uh, yeah. I mm. felt like if, I felt, I mean, I was educa I'm educated, so I was able to interpret a lot of that stuff, but I don't know how other people would have dealt with that because that was very intimidating and um, overwhelming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's I might just add something there about that part on the health policy is that I remember Badger Bates went in years ago, and um, he lives out of Broken Hill Road, maybe Volcania. Mm. Uh, how do artists get their work there? Um, from the desert, mm -hmm. and New South Wales has more Aboriginal people than any other state, mm -hmm. including the Northern Territory. Mm -hmm. And they can't um, pick it up afterwards, or I mean, we have trouble ourselves. And a lot of our artists told us that they couldn't afford to go in it. Yeah. So the people that can afford to go in those contests and get their work there, pick it up. And what about if <coughs> you can't send that? Um, that email, you know, ahead of time. They don't want the yeah. painting. They just want a little. Yeah. So what? What about the Aboriginal yeah. artists that can't do that? That's either? where corporations yeah. could probably help. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yep. They don't want <laughs> it. Well, they don't just want go. You, you can't a, be in it. You're like a fly. I yeah. want to compliment on that, and that's a good thing you raised, yeah. because um, having been a, I was a finalist in the Telstra for a decade as well, before they changed, and uh, uh, short answer to your question is that they need to appreciate the sensitivity of the artist and that fact yeah, that artists, right. a lot of artists don't have a lot of money or they've got to yeah, transport it a long way or IT so they cannot cut yeah. the funding so what happened was I lived in I was entering in an era where um, I was painting from a little garage in Haberfield my first share house when I came to Sydney and they used to send a TNT truck a semi trailer mm. pulled up out the front of your house <laughs> and two guys came and carried your painting into the truck wow. and off it went to Darwin. Wow. And in the course of five years while I was entering, uh, and also the catalog the back then was, was a very juicy book. It was a, a, each artist had their own page or even two pages, artwork there, yeah, blurb there. Wow. And in the course of that, the very year that Uncle Ziggy got the $9 million handshake when he left, that it was the CEO, um, at the time, who broke contract but still got the $9 million handshake. That same year, they reduced the catalog to uh, four pages. And that was wow. a page for only a, the winner of the four categories. And then in the, in the uh, rear two leaves of the booklet were the list of all of the other artists. Just a name. Just a name. Not even a picture. And also at that, that time, they had cut the opportunity to transport your art. Yeah. So you should just send it like that. Now that's why that's why I stopped entering yeah. because it cost me. And there's only one company in Sydney that send to Darwin, and that's Shaw's Transport in Wetherill yeah. Park. They don't pick it up. You've got to take your painting or your sculpture to Wetherill Park, and then consign it and put it in there. And it was costing me to get the same size canvas <coughs> that they used to pick up, uh, nine hundred dollars to make it to make a crate, to put it on the truck, get it there, and get it back. Yeah, it's not. Who yeah, can afford that? Well, well, how many Aboriginal not, artists can that You yeah. may not even get in, or that's, that's, have, you, that's right. have they already that's told you? No, that's, it, that's if you've been selected. Yeah, so but you it's are still, selected. It's still going to cost you a lot of what, money. What would happen if no, no Aboriginal artists were there? Um, you'd have a blackout. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, that's a good uh, no point putting the lights on. Mm. So there's nothing to show. But it'll be a good protest. 